So you've decided to invest. Well, you've come to the right place. I'm Mark Laudy, and in the next seven minutes or so, we'll take you through step by step what you need to do to get started. We're doing so as part of Singapore Investment Week, 25th to the 31st of August, investing for a secure future. Our guest today is Caden Chung. He's director of Mind Kinesis, and he's going to tell us uh, all about it. Hi, Caden. Nice to see you today. Tell us firstly, how do you get started in investing? What's the first step? Okay, the first step actually they need to do is they need to know what is their investment outcome. Okay, and why then for, are they investing? In other words, yeah, exactly. And then how much do they need? How much? When do they need to retire and so on? So they really need to know what is their investment outcome. And from there, they reverse engineer the whole process to know every single month how much money is required to set aside for investment. So knowing the goal is the, the critical first part. Exactly, that's the very first part. Yeah. What's so, next? Yeah. So the next part, in fact, is to decide what are the means. So in this context, we're talking about shares or stocks, which are interchangeably used. Now, the first one, what we need to know is really to assess the stocks. Now, what do we mean by assess? That means to really understand what... The, what are you going to buy? What are you going to purchase? What are you going to invest in? Okay, for example, if let's say you want to buy a company, you need to see from the fundamental aspects. Now, one quick example is really to understand the company's economic mode. Now, what do I mean by economic mode? In summary, there are three things the investor needs to look out for. The first thing is probably the branding. Okay, the second thing is the economy of scale. And the third thing is really trade secret, any patent, any things intellectual properties that allows the company to sustain over a long period of time. A so competitive this advantage, a barrier to entry. That's exactly. Mm. So if you're talking about, for example, branding, let's say if you ask fast food, if you're talking about fast food, what comes into the consumer's mind? Now, it most likely is going to be like McDonald's. If it's coffee, most likely it's going to be like Starbucks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're talking about branding. The second thing, if you're talking about economy of scale, now one good example in a company overseas is, for example, Walmart. Now, Walmart brings in lots and lots of stuff, lots and lots of goods. They sell practically everything. So in that sense, they are able to sell things very cheaply. Okay, so that's what we're talking about, economy of scale. Mm -hmm. And the next one we're talking about, for example, trade secret. Yeah, one good example would be, for example, the company um, Coca-Cola. Yeah, Coca-Cola, no one knows the secret recipe yes. of, co of Coca-Cola. A lot of people who work at Coca-Cola don't even know what, yeah, what exactly. the secret recipe is. Yeah, so that's really a trade secret. So these are the three things to look out for. Um, regarding to the economy mode, or some people call it the durable competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. So this is the first thing, assessment of stocks. Right. Okay. So you've decided what you're investing for, exactly. how much money you will need. Uh, you've decided that, uh, yes, you want to look at stocks, yes. and these are the, the three things that you've just mentioned that you will be looking out for. Exactly. Then what? Do we go out and buy straight away? Uh, no, no. Even though the companies which are fantastic, which are good, which are profitable, but the key thing is not all is worth at any price. So what we want is we want to buy things cheap or rather at a discount. I mean, Singaporeans love discount, great mm -hmm. Singapore sales. Yes. Yeah. So we want to buy things at a discount. So what we need to do is first thing, we need to really assess the intrinsic value of the company. That means how much the company is worth. So what we need to do is we check the current share price and if the share price is below how much it's worth, we buy. And if it's above, we just hold. Yes. Yeah. So this is what we meant by buying undervalued companies. Yes, but let, let's drill down into that because various people have different ways of calculating yeah. the val that particular value. Some exactly. people say it's the price to earnings multiple, exactly. although it's very grey, right? Is, is, is yeah. 9 a good number? Is 12 a yeah, good number? Yeah. Some people look at yield. Do exactly. I get paid more than yeah. uh, the, the money gets paid in the bank? Mm. Some people look at price mm. to book ratio. Others uh, then say, no, no, you have to divide price to book into tangible and intangible assets. So exactly. w where do you then lay that precise marker to say this is how much the company is worth. <clears throat> okay, there are a couple of ways that we can use to, to really calculate intrinsic value. Now, one of the ways that we use, I mean, I can say very briefly in the sense that we use two variables, one which is the PE ratio, price to earning ratio, the other one we, we use the earnings per share. Okay, what we need to do is, in, sim in simple terms, we do a projection based on earnings per share, rever we reverse engineer, we add in this thing called the margin of safety. So in case there's a certain error in terms of the calculation, and from there, we derive the intrinsic value of the company. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you decide whether or not the stock is trading above or, or within that range of exactly. intrinsic value. Yeah. But how do you know that this is the precise value that the company oh, is? Okay, worth? in fact, we, we won't. We will know what's the precise value, which is why we need to add in the margin of safety. 
Because if, let's say, Warren Buffett or Charlie Munger is going to be here, and we give them one company to calculate the intrinsic value, and then both of them will give us two different set of values, yes. which is why you need the margin of safety. Mm. Now, for example, if we set the margin of safety to, let's say, 20%, now, in simple terms, it means like a buffer, an error for buffer. In case we make certain errors, at least we have 20% of buffer. Yeah. So, in this sense, investors will be practically... Uh, on the more conservative side, because investment, we want to be very, very conservative. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so let's say we've done all of that, okay. and now is the time to trade, or is there one more step? Okay, now, so the moment the, moment the investors calculate what's the intrinsic value, the next step is really to buy. Okay. Yeah, it's and just which, buy. <laughs> which, then, which then brings up the next question, which yeah. I'm sure investors ask you all the time. Okay, yeah. so I've bought it, and I'm up. Yeah, twenty percent, forty percent, sixty percent. Maybe even they've doubled their money. Okay. They don't know when to sell. Very good. Now, so the next thing to know when to sell, basically there are three things. Now, first thing is you sell when the, the price meets your desired return. For example, if your desired return is 20%, the moment it hits 20%, you can sell the stocks. So that's one way. But, you know, then you think, come on, if only I held on a little bit longer, it might go to 25%. Exactly. That's a good question. In fact, nobody knows when, when will the stocks be at its peak. Because by the time anyone knows, you'll be dropping down. Mm. Yeah. So, why so better to... Cut at that point, is it? It's better to sell at a point in time where it meets your desired return, which is, goes back to the step one, which is why the person needs to know the investment outcome, yeah, so that we stay out of greed. The moment it hit our uh, desired return, we, we sell. So this one thing. Now, the second thing is if the company loses its economy mode. Now, just give a hypothetical example. If, let's say, tomorrow, somebody leaks out the recipe for Coca-Cola, Goodness, now, that yeah, would be news. Yeah, or maybe a Kentucky Fried Chicken or yeah, any it's the eleven secret herbs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. are not secret anymore. <laughs> exactly. So that's when the time that you may consider selling the stocks, because no longer the company is going to hold that durable competitive advantage anymore. Right. Okay. So first one will be desired return. Second one will be losing its economy mode for the company, and the third one is really if you are able to allocate the same amount of money to park it elsewhere, which has a higher return. Right. For example, if you are parking in stocks A. So this stock say gives you, let's say, an annual return of 10%, just an example. And you realize that through your research, you discover another company which gives you 20%. So you may consider selling this stock for stock A and invest in stock B. So these are three things. Desire return, company losing its economic mode or durable competitive advantage. The last one is you can park your money elsewhere, which gives you a higher return. Brilliant. Thank you very much for giving us the step-by-step -step guide to starting investing. Kaden Chang from Mind Kinesis. Thank you.